You couldn't live a day without this stuff, and that is pure copper. But how the heck is it made? Well, we visited one of the world's largest mining operations to find out, and we're bringing you along with us. Welcome to the Bingham Canyon Mine, owned and operated by mining giant Rio Tinto. They've mined here for 120 years and produced not only copper, but gold, silver, molybdenum, and tellurium. Today, many claim it's the largest excavation on Earth, covering 27,000 acres and reaching 2.5 miles wide and half a mile deep. With that, it's time to head into the pit and see the first part of the process. Behind me is where the entire mining operation starts. It's the drilling and blasting. So we have enormous production drills, drilling 10 inch holes. Immediately behind me are the blasters. They're filling each one of these holes, 200 holes for this shot with these boosters. The green cord there helps with the timing to set the shot off. And then these trucks will fill those holes with the primary explosive that is the emulsion. They'll be blasting this afternoon at about 4 p.m. And then once the blast happens, they can start moving the material. Step two is the loading process. They have 12 shovels here loading ore and waste material 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They load into CAT 794 and Komatsu 930 haul trucks, over 300 tons of material per truck hauled to either the waste dump or one of the crushers. That right there is a PH 2800 shovel. It is an absolute monster for passing those with copper ore that was blasted just days prior. Thanks for having us. This is my favorite machine to go for a ride in. It's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, the trucks that we've loaded with copper ore have traveled from the bottom of the pit all the way out to here. 
which is the crusher. This is capable of crushing over 10,000 tons of copper ore per hour. That truck there just dumped over 300 tons of ore in there. It's now being crushed, crushed, crushed. It spits out in the bottom onto a conveyor that then carries it to the concentrator for the next step of the process. And now we're at the middle part of the process, the concentrator. This is where they take the ore, remove the valuable stuff, and discard the earth before they send the valuable stuff to the final process, the smelter. So we saw the crusher, the material dropped through that crusher, it sized it, it put it on a conveyor. Six miles, it arrives here at this A-frame, this big stockpile of copper ore. From here, there's four feeders underneath that pile that pull that material at about 8,000 tons per hour into the next part of the concentrating process. From here, the copper ore goes by conveyor belt, it's rocks like this, into sag mills. Inside of those sag mills are eight inch steel balls. And at that point, it's also mixed with water. So that rock is being pounded by those steel balls as they're being tossed around inside of that giant drum, which beats it down to a small size. Then from there, once it's small enough, it's discharged into smaller ball mills. Again, it's with that water, with those steel balls, pounded, pounded, pounded in there until it turns to a fine beach sand, which then goes out the other end into the cyclone. Okay. The next part of the process. So we've crushed everything to a very, very fine sand. We've mixed it with water and then introduced some chemicals. It's all now pumped over here. The chemicals are key because they start to bond to the copper, the moly, the gold, the silver, the valuable stuff and pull it away from the rock. When everything's pumped into these tanks, it's agitated, which creates a foam in that the, the moly, the copper, the good stuff floats to the surface in that foam and then overflows and is collected to begin forming that concentrate, whereas the water and the rock, the rest of the stuff that we don't want, stays at the bottom and then can be pumped away. So this is the first step in really separating the good stuff from the ore to create the concentrate we're after before this melting process. Before we go into the smelter, we have to complete our transformation into a stormtrooper. So we have coveralls, coveralls, sleeves, sleeves, leather gloves, boots, full face respirator, hard hat, earplugs. We are decked out. As safe as I've ever been. And now for the next step in the process, smelting. And it's worth noting that Rio Tinto is the only integrated copper mining operation in North America, meaning they mine and refine the copper to 99.9% .9 all in the same place. Simply, they take the wet concentrate, dry it, and turn it all into liquid with gas furnaces. They separate the two, then pour the liquid good stuff into enormous anodes, which are about 98% copper plus all the other metals mixed together. We're in the tank house, which is where they take the almost pure copper and make it into very pure copper. So the anodes we saw coming from the smelter arrive here. 
and then they're lowered into each one of these cells. So these, they'll have 46 of these in between the anodes. So it'll be anode, and then one of these blanks, anode, one of these blanks. They run an electrical current through the cell, which then warms up the copper, and then the copper, well, how do I explain this? It excites the copper, and the copper looks at the stainless steel like, ooh, that's really nice. And it floats across the water and sticks to this, and only the copper sticks to this. The rest, the lead, the silver, the gold, the other metals, then sinks to the bottom and is taken to the precious metals facility. So when this is pulled about 14 days later, it is pure copper that is then taken to market. Before we wrap up, if you're wondering, I wish I could see the mine for myself. I have good news for you. Rio Tinto operates a visitor center, typically open from April to October, which offers a sweet view of the pit. And finally, to wrap up, a huge thank you to Rio Tinto for having us. I loved this visit.